I wanted to talk more about the scientific process because I feel like a lot of people are confused about the scientific method. Okay, so this is talking about the scientific method. So reasoning in science, okay, so learning about the scientific method is almost like you are learning how to learn. The scientific method is the process used to study the world around them. It could be used also to test whether any statement is accurate. So you can use the scientific method to study, say, leaves, dogs, cats, ocean, the universe, and this also includes any God claims, supernatural claims, paranormal claims. All right, so we all have questions about the world. We want to know how did that happen? Why is this here? Or why do cats have hair? And and one answer, say, to cats on hair might be to keep them warm. A good scientist would be come up with an experiment to test whether that statement accurate. Boom. Okay, that's the scientific method in action. So just about everything starts with a question. So usually we come up with questions by looking up the world we see around us. What is that? How did that occur? What is going on here? And so it starts with questions. So now you've got a scientist. When science to see something that they don't understand, they have the urge, like we all do, to answer and discover new things. It's one of those scientific <laughs> personality traits. I think we all have this trait, actually. The thing is, the trick is, when it coming to answering questions, you have to be able to offer evidence that confirms the answer you give. That's why the answer to any question can never be God, because what evidence can you confirm that there is a God or what that God does or would do? So if you can't test your own answer, obviously scientists on science can't test it to see if you're right or not. This is, again, why God can never be the answer. As more questions are answered and more questions asked, Science builds a foundation of answers and a foundation of evidence. And once you have a lot of individual answers, you come to organise into sort of sets and then be able to explain what's going on. And the one of the cool things about science is that other scientists and other people can learn things from what has already been established. They'd, they don't have to test everything again and again, again, but they frequently do. Science builds on what has been learned before, but they do question everything again and again too. They question everything. Nothing's taken for granted. The whole process of science allows us all, the world and humans, to advance, evolve and grow. I don't mean evolution or biologists, but to change and get better. All of today's advancements are based on achievements done by people, who've already done the work in the past, and it's always achieved by people constantly testing. I mean, you know, we all should know that water, H2O, is composed of one oxygen and two hydrogen. Many people have confirmed that fact, and they continue to confirm that fact, okay? Experimental evidence is used to confirm the answers in science. Results are validated, which means found to be truthful when other scientists and other people repeat the experiments and come up with the results. Okay, a history of how these experiments were done, a history of the evidence shown and the validations show that the original statements were correct. And people can also follow this and perform the experiments to see themselves and see if they get the same results. Scientists start with general observations, so they might see and look and detect certain things. They make a hypothesis. A hypothesis is somewhere between a statement and a guess. It's a proposed explanation for something that has been observed. Say maybe a hypothesis could be all flowers are yellow, right? Once you have a scientific hypothesis, you have to test it. Okay, so you run experiments and use sets of procedures. So trials and tests 
that will lead to observations and data okay data is a collection of all the evidence whether it's good bad or otherwise okay the data is evidence so if the data shows that what you okay is the evidence you can use to determine the so data is a collection of all the facts the data is the evidence you can use to determine if the hypothesis was correct it's important that the experiment is as objective as possible without bias you must use controls which are quantitative so based on values and figures not on emotions and opinions okay so experiments have to be based on value and figures not opinions or emotions which is why belief in God fails okay scientists can examine the results and develop newer ideas this process leads to more observation more tests refinement of hypothesis so science needs both the ideas, the hypothesis, and the facts, the quantitative results to move forward. So what about that first hypothesis? Are all flowers yellow? No, they aren't. Why? We went outside and looked and saw and took pictures of a red flower. The existence of one red flower means the original hypothesis is incorrect. Another scientist might make another hypothesis that say all flowers are red or yellow. You could test this hypothesis by looking at a larger variety of flowers. Okay, accumulation of evidence. There are differences, there are different terms used to describe scientific ideas and based on the amount of confirmed experimental evidence. So a hypothesis is a statement that uses a few observations. It's an idea or proposition based on some observations without the experimental evidence. A theory uses many, many observations, has lots of experimental evidence, lots of data, can be applied to unrelated facts and new relationships. It's flexible enough to be modified if new data and evidence is introduced. Okay, so what is a law? It stands the test of time without change. It can be experimentally confirmed over and over, can create true predictions for different situations has uniformity and is universal and all theories have laws in them even theory of evolution you may also hear about the term model model is a scientific statement that has some experimental validity or a scientific concept that is only accurate under limited situations models do not work or apply under all situations in all environmental they are not universal ideas like a law or a theory okay so climatologists might use many models to predict climate change okay and each model might be dependent on specific variables and situations all right so that's where that comes in so more on scientific studies so logical reason has in has you thinking so logic has you thinking with reason and arguments, which are statements, okay? Scientists use logic because it shows the relationships between the parts of an idea and the whole idea. Therefore, if you use logic, you can see the relationship between a few trees and the entire forest. I, like if we talk biology, you understand how animals interact with each other, then you will better understand the whole ecosystem. Okay, so the scientific method is a rational, logical thought process that is used to figure out the facts and the truth, which is what the facts are, okay, which is what the nature of reality. So this is why God cannot be rational, belief in a God is not rational. All of the answers must be demonstrated. You have to show you how you got them, the data, the evidence, okay, what did you do? When someone comes and says, I've figured out the answer, the other scientists and other people need to get together and see what the person did and can they repeat the procedures if they can't then it's not demonstrated if they can it is demonstrated there are no opinions that are considered scientific law so the opinion that the god cannot be a scientific law to scientists the truth is something that is quantitative so therefore god's paranormal supernatural is not there's not anything we can measure or test Quantitative statements are the ones that can be proved through experiments. 
And if someone has an opinion or idea that it can't be produced, so say if someone has an opinion or an argument that can't be proved directly, they call it a qualitative argument. Okay, so deductive reasoning is you have started with the information or idea that is called a premise. Eventually you come up with conclusions based on your original premise. Sherlock Holmes, that detective person from the books, uses deductive reason to solve mysteries. Think of it this way. If this happens and then this happens, then you can come to so and so conclusion. So if the premises are true, your conclusion should also be true. So if you can say like if a ball has force and energy can be transferred in collusion, then this ball can transfer energy if it gets in a collision okay so if a ball has force and its energy can be transferred in collisions then this ball can transfer energy if it gets into a collision okay inductive reasoning inductive reasoning works in the exact opposite direction you start by having a number of observations saying i see that or this happens here I believe this will happen just like the others because the circumstance is similar. It's a process in two parts. When you start with the specifics and come up with a theory, that's deductive. When you apply that theory to new areas, it's called inductive reasoning. You can organize data in categories and say, what do they have in common? There's a problem with inductive reasoning, however. Your conclusions have more information than the facts you use. Okay, you start with dozens of examples, take an inductive leap and assume millions of possible examples. So if the conclusion is true, the new premises and assumptions are true. It's not a good way of doing it, all right? Logic has taken a long time to refine. Um, you, you know, it hasn't happened overnight. Um, the ideas have changed and methods have been documented and examined. Um, so, you know, it's this is the thing. This is nothing happens overnight. So learning how to do, um, you know, good scientific reasoning is important. This is pretty much uh, just a basic introductory video on scientific reasoning. I'll talk more about it later.